That's the way of our world. Ionios. Tell me, what would possess you to side with them? We're fighting because there are enemies to kill. I refuse to believe you're him. I knew it. I saw this coming. The time to talk about it is now. Hello everybody, Megazard X here. Back at the again to give you another very exciting video for today. Oh boy, I alluded to this in my Zarcast podcast, my previous episode, and we recently got Xenoblade Chronicles 3 announced at the latest Nintendo Direct. And you know, you know me, and you know my channel. I dedicated videos and discussion videos and big segments to this in my Zarcast podcast and previous videos on my channel. You know, when Xeno 3 dropped, I literally yelled out in my reaction video, we got to talk about this, Sonic U. We got to talk about this. And I, and I got the crew here yeah. today. I got Sonic yeah. U. How's, how's it going, man? It's going good. I just got my pre-ordered in for the Nia figure. <laughs> oh, boy. Man, Max that, 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 that dude, that, man, that figure is like real expensive. No, it's like 200 no, 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 or something. No, 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 no. It, it was the perfect Valentine's gift. Well, to me. Yeah. Yeah, you're kind of lucky because that, that pre-order okay. dropped like right before we were about to do this discussion. I was like, bro, what the heck? Imagine sending the Nia figure to like your Valentine and being saying, I wish you were like this. I wish you looked like this. <laughs> oh, no. And then how, how are you doing, Steven? How are you doing, man? I'm doing decent. I'm playing I'm playing a quirky roguelike right now while talking about this game. All right, so now, now, now that the, now that the crew is all here, it's it's time to talk about Xenoblade Three. So, um, he, so at least first up on the docket, uh, we're gonna go ahead and talk about our raw reactions to the Xenoblade Three announcement because y'all heard some of my thoughts at least in the the previous Zarkast podcast. But uh, what was your original thoughts, Sonic Q, as, as that was slowly getting played out? You saw this man playing on this flute, and then what was running in your mind when you saw that scene? I was like. Bruh, is, are we really getting a Xenoblade 3 trailer? Then they they showed like, like Neo, as the trailer went on, like I, I noticed like areas. Mio was like, wait, is Nia? No, they can't be Nia. And then they showed all these characters. They showed Sword Valley. It was like, bro, let's go. That's, oh wait, that's not Sword Valley, actually, because oh. the the Mechanist sword is like facing upright. You can see it, and it's like you know, it's like yeah. vertical. But still, it's like though. A, it's it's probably I don't know. I seen have you seen those screenshots where some exact areas from Xenoblade One have been spotted in the trailer? My what? Some exact areas from Xenoblade One have been spotted in the trailer. Yeah, no, like um one yeah. of the areas was like the one from uh, Future Connected. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like Bionic Shoulder. And then like the other it's... one was like uh, when you're heading you know like the the, the water area when you're heading toward Galcamoth? Yeah. Or, like, yeah. The... Yes. Yeah. Hmm. Like that big place, you know, where Prison Island was. The whole high Sea. Right? Yeah. Like, that's probably going to be a big area you go to. The beach, yeah, you were, they were swimming in it. So was that, so that, was that your raw, I know, was that your raw reaction, Sonic? You're just like, oh, they're just going to give us another uh, Z-Blade 3? It was, I, like, as the trailer went on, yeah, like, I, I could tell, like, this was Xenoblade. But... I think the moment that had me in what, well, I guess like it was my initial reaction was disbelief, but like more so at the end when they revealed that, yes, this game is coming at the end of the year, uh, like September, was it? Yeah, September, yeah, oh, yeah, it just said which, September, yeah. Which to me was like, how the hell is this game coming out at the end of the year? That's like incredible. Cause like within like five years from like um, Xenoblade 2, we had, we had Xenoblade 2, then we had Torna, then we had Definitive Edition, and then we had, you know, the Future Connected, which, you know, those aren't small games. They're, like, they're very huge. And here we go, Xenoblade 3. It's like, how did Monolith do this? That's, like, incredible. Hey, they're a very, they're a very talented team up there. I, my hat goes off to them every single time I see they're their very, work. very, very, very talented, yeah. Very talented. And then what about you, Steven? Uh, what was your raw I reaction? The moment that I seen that shot of the war, where you know it pans up to the uh, that big uh, Kevace machine, yeah, I knew it was no. As soon as I seen the choreography and like you know how how the animations looked, you know, because Xenoblade's got that style to it, I immediately knew it was Xenoblade. Just like uh, like I was like, holy shit, 
Xenoblade. But at first, you know, of course, the raw thought is Xenoblade 3. But I, I tried to restrain myself, like, you know, hey, maybe we're getting, like, maybe we're just getting a tease. Maybe they're going to be, like, or maybe I was just thinking in my head, oh, this is the new Monolith Soft game. Maybe it just looks a lot like Xenoblade. Maybe we're getting that would franchise. be cool if they did if they did another well, IP. I thought well, there no, were some the things thing. in the, the been, rumor mill work. Yeah, apparently they've been working on a new IP for years at this point. It's either they're still working on it or they lied and it was Xenoblade Three. <laughs> 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 but knowing knowing Monolith, they they could have just lied. Because mm. like I I don't know if, if they have three teams, and you know. Xenoblade 2, think about it. Xenoblade 3 was not developed for two years. They had one team on Definitive Edition. They had one team on, like, Animal Crossing and Splatoon 3 and all those games that they work on. And they have one team, the main team, working on this. Absolutely. Yeah, because they always have a main team working on the next thing. One that was, like what you said, working on the uh, Definitive Edition. And they always have another team that's running on support. But from what I've been hearing... Yeah. For Xenoblade 3, I think they had all hands on deck. Maybe not the support team, but at least two-thirds of their, their entire task force working on this. And you can kind of see visually, it, it is kind of paying off, though. But at least in terms of my yeah. raw reaction, oh, gosh. I, I was like, instantly when I saw the dude on the flute, I was thinking in the back of my mind, this is Xenoblade 3, baby. This is Xenoblade 3. I was like, bro, I was like, this is it. And especially once they started bringing out the blades and stuff and rushing out on these vehicles and stuff, and then you saw the giant mech, I was like, heck yes, boy, let's go. I was going to say, it kind of, like, at first I was thinking maybe X2 because you've seen the so much yeah. mechanical shit. I was but like, no, this ain't, this ain't no uh, X2, especially once we, we saw some of the other main characters and protagonists wait, yeah. in the story. I was like, oh, yeah. Ooh, thank goodness we laid wait, that mess to no, no, here's the thing. No, when I seen the whole war shot, like, you know, when I seen the flute and, like, the war shot, I thought, oh, maybe a new Monolith Soft game because, you know, the flute thing, I didn't think that looked like a Xenoblade thing or it would all. Yeah, like, the, the flute no. thing is definitely, like, is definitely new. Well, so, yeah. Not, not in terms of, like, uh, like, well, uh, what's the, what, the word for it? It would kind of make sense in this world ridden by war and all this new advanced technology that, like, in a new, like, almost supernatural force would rise above for people to believe in for hope. Yeah. Which I don't it, know. That, that makes sense. Yeah. And then it kind of makes it, sense. Yeah. But I guess before I, we go any further on, I did want to kind of give everybody some context because th this is crazy. The fact that, you know, we're we getting this thing. And literally, I did want to call this out before I start reading this little quote thing I had pulled up. The fact that I called this out, uh, Stephen, it, yeah, literally, yeah. I called I called it out. Uh, well, this is off the record. Like, I, I didn't have this in a video when I said oh, it to you. Record. But I, I told you, I said, hey, man, we're we getting Xenoblade 3. And you did not believe me. And then yeah, I even right. went back even further. And if y'all can go back and look at this mess if y'all want to. In our last Xenoblade Chronicles um, discussion where, what was it, me, you, Sonic U, maybe somebody else? I think it was maybe Mario. Where we were talking about our thoughts on Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition and just talking about all things Xeno, I even called it out right there. I was like, hey, I was like, Xenoblade Chronicles 3, we may get it around 2022. I was alluding to that mess way back when. I know my stuff. All right, I, anyway. I didn't I, like, say something? Did I say something about, like, we might get an announcement in 2022? Because, like, I didn't, because, like, my thought process was, like, okay, we can get, like, an announcement trailer in 2022, but it's going to come out in, like, 2023 or, like, late 2023. I, I think it would be coming out like a year early, you know. <laughs> I, I I went back and looked at it, and I I was saying the 2022, and then you were like, oh well, oh, maybe, and I think you might have said 2023 or something like that. Listen, but you were almost kind of agreeing I, with me. I only thought Xenoblade couldn't happen because this year was already kind of packed. This year, like this year was already kind of packed. <laughs> it would make perfect sense for Nintendo to put Xenoblade like at the be not the beginning of next year, but like you know in the same. You know, they put Xenoblade Definitive Edition in a really good May t May like slot. I would say that May was like a really good year for uh, like a really good spot for Xenoblade Definitive Edition right before E3, like two weeks before E3, giving people a perfect amount of time to beat it before all the big announcements of E3 that didn't happen that year. But yeah. All right. All right, so before we get up into our main discussion, I do want to kind of provide some background context in terms of the game development, the, the new world that we're up in, yeah. and some of the basic premises of why this is kind of tethered to both Xenoblade Chronicles 1 and Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Are you so going to... 
Are you gonna like um, get like the the message that a uh, side? Bro, I, I was just about to go into it and read it. Okay. You can cut me off yeah. like that, bro. Like what the heck? Well, I'm, not, wait, wait, well, wait, I'm just Saito. wondering like if you're gonna bring that up. Yeah, Saito, like the, the right. um the designer for like the characters in this oh, game. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah, like the designer like for Pyra, Mithra, like Rex, uh, yeah, Dan Dan, for example. Yeah. He's the main cast. All right, so according to a response from Tetsuya Taki. Takahashi, yeah, Tetsuya Takahashi from Monolith Soft. He said, yeah. just over four years since the release of Xenoblade Chronicles 2 and one and a half years since the release of Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition, we now bring you news regarding the newest and latest gaming from Monolith Soft, Xenoblade Chronicles 3, baby. As the name indicates, it's the third installment in the Xenoblade Chronicles series, and we are currently making final adjustments to ensure we create the best game possible based on everything we learned from the past entries of the series. I love the fact that he said that. The key visual features a, bro a broken greatsword of Makanis and the body of the... I hope I say this one right. Orion Titan? Was that right? Okay, yeah, Orion Uriah, Titan. Yeah. Uriah, yeah. Uriah Titan with a gapping wound. I imagine everyone who saw the trailer was quite surprised by the final scene. What is the visual hinting at? I can't reveal that just yet. What I can tell you is that this visual was conceived quite some time ago. More precisely speaking, we came up with it sometime between the end of the development of Xenoblade Chronicles and the beginning of the development of Xenoblade Chronicles 2, so it's not something we recently added to the series. We believe the game will be enjoyable for both those who play Xenoblade Chronicles or Xenoblade Chronicles 2, as well as those who will be playing a yes. Xenoblade Chronicles game for the first time. I do love that. If you hadn't tried the series, you better jump up in it. Now, the characters were designed by, oh gosh, please forgive me if I mess this one up though, Matsusaga, Matsusuga, Matsusaga, Mats Matsuga, Matsuga, is it Matsuga? M A S. Let me, look up the, let me look at it. I, I don't know if he's like his first name, but like I think I can pronounce but it. But Saito, I think Saito is the, his first name, I believe. Maybe. Saito is like his last name, I thought. No, they might do the last name, first name thing first in Japan. Anyway, though. Uh, I, don't, but, I don't know. Okay. But we'll okay. say. Oh, go ahead. Masasugo, Masasugo Saito. See, I got Saito right. All right. So Masasugo Saito who also designed the characters of Xenoblade Chronicles 2. He designed the characters for Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Let that sink in for those fans that kind of been jumping all over the place on the internet. Now, while we can't reveal them at this time, Ko oh gosh, again with the names, Koichi Mugi Mugitani. Koichi Mugitani created some of the game's key oh, yeah. artwork. As you can see, Familiar staff members with the Xenoblade Chronicles series have once again come together to create this game. The game music was also handled by the artists who contributed to the to the series in the past. The music for Xenoblade Chronicles 3 was composed by none other than Yasunori um, Mitsu, or Mitsuda. Oh, Which Ace? Did it also, Ace? Oh, what? Does it say Ace composed for it? I haven't looked into it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah. was um, Yasunori. Oh, okay. uh, it was that Ace and uh, Manami Ki Kiyota. Mon Monami so Kyoto. They're gonna finish the trilogy oh and have a have a third. You will know our names. They better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You will, you will know our names. You'll uh, re recall uh, our remember. Names. Yeah, recall our names. You will remember our names. And then there was also uh, Kenji Haramatsu and Mar. Oh golly, this is a lot of names. And Mariam um, Abba. Oh shoot, I'm mistaken with Mariam. Anyway, the music in this game maintains the unique Xenoblade Chronicles touch while also taking on a new challenge, namely that of integrating a flute-based melody as a motive. The flute is actually one of the key themes in, uh, in this game. A variety of other elements and themes are hidden in the trailer and we'll be revealing the details a bit at a time going forward. Xenoblade Chronicles 3 is a new adventure bringing together the worlds of Xenoblade Chronicles and Xenoblade Chronicles 2 to take players into the future. While there is still some time left before the game, before the release of the game, I hope you'll look forward to it. And that was the note from Tetsuya Takahashi. One thing I was just remembering, I haven't finished Future Connected, but apparently the story has to do with an extra dimensional rift. Yeah. So, yeah. so do they explain what that rift is? No, or do they, they don't. just say there's a rift? Yeah, no, they don't. Definite. They don't. They don't explain what the rift is, so, but like so it I probably mean, has I'm, something to tie in with Xenoblade Three so, about how the worlds are like merging. Okay, which... I made, 
I made a theory while you were gone, Sanicu. I was saying that, like, the world's, you know, like, Zanza, Zanza... What do you mean I was gone? Oh, yeah, well, while you were setting up your stuff, I was saying oh. Zanza, I was saying Zanza being defeated didn't immediately, immediately cause this. But, like, you know, Zanza being defeated kind of kick-started a chain of, a chain of events that led well, to... Well, you have to remember, third. Zanza was defeated alongside with Klaus uh, dying well, That's the other what one. I'm saying. And you Maybe. know how, like, half of his body was, like, a rift? Yeah, well, yeah, the, basically... I think, now now that both are gone, the rift is, like... Uh, this is just me assuming. Maybe, like, the rift, like, completed, and it oh. combined these two worlds. You know, my theory is that, you know, Klaus originally created the Xenoblade 1 world, so the worlds, you know, are going back... Because my guess is that Klaus was the thing... Klaus and the power of the Conduit were keeping the worlds separate, letting them live their own worlds. I, I don't know, if I had to make a guess, uh, Zan uh, Klaus was using all of his power to keep Zanza from conquering that world, you know, all rest. Because obviously Zanza's a fucking crazy lunatic who wanted to control worlds and destroy them all right steven yeah so that's some interesting bit of lore but i did want to point something out because there was a certain shot where we did see the um the mechon or uh, the mechon sword um shot down into the earth like that and then the the point of view the, the camera was at we were looking directly up at it so it makes me think uh shoot because i'm like are we technically on the ground because if your theory was to exist about the whole thing with the uh, with, you know the Xeno One world merging with the Xeno Two floor. Remember, uh, at the end of Xenoblade Two, the Cloud Sea is gone. So technically, you would be on the ground, um, looking up at it. Because I don't think you actually be up on the Titan, though. So it is just a little food to thought, just to kind of think about. Well, so I forgot. Yeah, that is true. So I got a question. In in Future Connected, can you like see Makanis? Like, where's Makanis in no, you Future don't, Connected? You don't see Makanis at it all. Is it gone? Is it no? Destroyed? It's not gone. It's still there. So that's weird like, that you don't see it. Um, I was gonna say, well, of course, you know, there's nothing to back this up. It'd be funny if, like, the world was already, at that point in Future Connected, the world was already starting to be transported back to Allrest. Like, you know, Mechanis well, falls maybe. into Allrest, and then Bionis later falls into Allrest. Well, all we, so, ever, all yeah. we get is just yeah. a, a rift, that's it. Well, we, don't, yeah, yeah. we don't get anything else. But, like, Future Connected, setting up the rift, you know, obviously makes me think that if that world is the one with the rift, then that means that's the world that's being transported. Things are coming out of that. You say like, that, you know, but, like, uh, Xenoblade 2 okay, also had the rift with Klaus. And that was, like, well, the first. Well, what, isn't Klaus's body the rift? Yeah, like, half of his yeah, body is I, gone. And they, yeah. the rift looks like the same... And then you literally hear Shulk through it, it pans yeah. on that part of his body, and then you hear Shulk. So like, yeah, yeah it's, yeah, I yeah. I I think I still, I still, I yeah. still think the thing about falling onto all rest will be what the big reveal is. I think the Makanis sword is gonna fall onto all rest, and they see it as an act of invasion of or like panic. Maybe. And and then these you know these people of the Xenoblade One world are wary. You know they they already just had to like you know go through a big war. They don't want to. Which is risk actually like a thing they talk about in Future Connected. What what did I don't yeah I haven't, what did they mention in Future Connected that they just went through a big war or yeah. like no no they they do mention that yeah yeah they were like. Like, you know, and obviously a lot of people died the moment the Makanis sword moved. Anyone who wasn't flying was killed. Yeah, man, them sw swiping through and killing out all those different people in Xeno 1. Golly, that, that was a pretty savage um, savage scene, though. But now that we got all of our theory segments out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about some of the main protagonists um, in the story. We're going to go ahead and start off um, talking about Noah, who is our main male protagonist lead over here. And uh, I got that little bio pulled up over here for us, though. So anyway, so we got Noah, who is one of the main protagonists of Xenoblade Chronicles 3. As a uh, as a Kevis soldier, he wields a bright and red blade in combat. He is also an offseer, someone who mourns for those who lost their lives on the battlefield. So a pretty cool um, looking, interesting character right right here. Just looking at him, though, I have more of my thoughts to share here in just a little bit, though. But uh, uh, Stephen, uh, what do you think about this uh, character and his design and some of the voice direction with, with the character and just anything else that you're kind of getting the vibes off of off of Noah from this first trailer? 
Oh. I didn't hear it's his voice pretty, at all in the I trailer. I dope looking. I know. Okay, I gotta admit, when I first seen him, I kind of didn't really like the ponytail thing uh, he had going on. I, I'm, I've the one on Ami Ami went uh, up. I've, well, yeah, I was trying to say, I have warmed up to his design in the last couple days, and now I, I like the colors. I really like the, the colors that he's got going on, the red and black. Or what, yeah, I'm colorblind, obviously, but I like how it looks. And also, like, you know, obviously people... He's got, like, this kind of regal design. You know, he's got, like, this weird, like, tough tuft or like on his chest or whatever it's almost like a, you know well, obviously he's like this you know person that like honors the dead he's got this like very formal design it went as you see him like first in the trailer we see so okay i gotta say we see a lot of these characters in different outfits and we i don't know if that's a story specific like points like you know he has that outfit for a little bit in the story or what like i i hope they have the feet from Xenoblade 1 of being able to just wear outfits. They, they've they already said they're combining what they learned from 1 and 2, so I, I hope so. Like, I'm looking at the, the shots right now in the trailer. There are a lot of characters, like, you know, there's that one scene where Noah and Mio are together where Noah's got, like, only, like, a, a light shirt on. Like, he's... He, he, he's, he's... I haven't... I don't know. Does he talk at all during the trailer? I didn't hear a single line from him. All right, Steven, you need to go ahead and see. I can tell you didn't even do your homework, man, because, uh, man, they, they literally started off the trailer uh, right at the very beginning with him monologuing against, you know, monologuing with himself and kind of giving us some basic story ground uh, background stuff while he was playing on that flute, man. I, I, I can just tell that you didn't um, just go back and look, look through the trailer, man. I'm like, come on now. Bruh. That's how we were all screaming about Xenoblade 3. I just want to ask, <laughs> is he British? Uh... Maybe. No, I don't think that he's British. I mean, from what I can tell, I mean, he has a little hint of it in his voice, just a tad little bit, though, but not too much where it's so much to the point. Like, I think, like, Xeno 1 and Xeno 2. I don't think it has that much up in there, but I, I would have to say probably no. All right, so now, now that you got your thoughts out of the way, Steven, though, I do want to hear um, your thoughts, Sonic. What did you think about Noah's design as well as this character, some of the vibes that you're just getting off of him um, within your first interaction with him in the trailer? Of uh, the SMT4 protagonist. <laughs> and, like, and like the the protagonist from uh, Xenogears. All right, now, in terms of my thoughts on Noah's design, um, honestly, he looks pretty sick, like the way how you said it, Sonic. You, because the fact that um you know he, he's repping that that red color that we know that's super iconic in the xenoblade franchise series though because you know that red you know you got shulk with the monado blade and stuff like that was red and then you had turn around and you have rex with his blade being red because you know pyra the strong connection with them in that story though so that red is definitely iconic and it's been iconic you know that red color in all the number series though so he does have a pretty cool sick design he does kind of remind me uh, a lot of shulk because he just kind of has have the the body physique and just like the competence of Shulk in those games in comparison to Rex, who literally was only like what 15 years old in the game right there, and I think like Shulk was like roughly almost in like his 20ish, young 20s or something like that. But yeah, so honestly, really cool character design. I do like the voice direction a little bit more with this character from what we heard from the lines that I personally heard. Somehow Steven missed those words. I don't know how though. But yeah, I did like the overall voice direction as well with this character though because um I, I think he leans closer to Shulk's side than more so um, Rex's side. Because Rex's side, he was cool, but I didn't quite like all the different voice directions. I feel like he got definitely better as you know it progressed along and further along in the story, though. But I definitely feel this is closer to Shulk, and I, I feel like this could be like a bad Mamma Jamma character um, by the end of the game, though. All right, so now that we got um, now that we got Noah's description out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about our secondary um, main protagonist, and that is none other than the girl who looks somewhat sort of kind of familiar to another person that we might know, similar to how Noah kind of kind of resembles Shulk in quite a way. To but meet Mio, um, she's the other protagonist of Xenoblade Chronicles Three and a soldier of Agnes who sports some rather distinctive ears. In battle, her speed allows her to easily evade attacks while de uh, while dishing out damage with her ring-shaped weapons. Much like Noah, Mio is an offseer as well. 
So this this thinking about that, I was like, oh golly, these, these offseers. Like, you know what? There, there's gonna be something interesting with the flute um, mechanic, though. And I'm pretty sure we'll break that down a little further on in the discussion, though. But uh, since uh, Steven got to give his thoughts on the uh, um, on what he thought about Noah first, I'll bounce the top, uh, I'll bounce the conversation over to you, Sonic U. So, uh, what do you think of Mio in terms of her character design and just maybe voice acting direction and just anything else from the character that you got from the vibe of this trailer? Mio. It, she's such an interesting character, not in the sense like it was, like, it's more of the sense of like how she looks so in in line with like, with how uh, Nia looks, like, and they even have like the same weapon types too, and like, and not even that, they're both, I'm not even sure if she's a blade or a blade eater, but like, they both have like the core crystal on their chest, they the same area too, so. I, I love her design. It, it, it's really good. And I'm just... I, I don't know. Like, it's like a... It's not really like a, a good theory to back up. Because obviously they could just be like two different characters. that just look the same. But still, I think they're... they I think they might be related. That's I just like my thought. Be, uh, I, I feel like it would be kind of a weird thing to have her have the exact same core crystal placement same race same ears very similar in name and not even have some sort of connection yeah if i had to make a guess maybe like maybe like the gourmati or like this i don't know i'm trying to think or i'm trying to think if maybe like in the whole thing with xenoblade 2 maybe like nia was one of the last because i'm trying to think because she's not you know she's a blade and we don't really know if blades can <laughs> Can, can reproduce or at least she's a blade eater i know that maybe maybe a blade eater has different rules or a flesh eater she's a flesh eater yeah yeah because like you know we know that they oh, gain some kind of <laughs> oh, yeah we we know that th we know that they gain some sort of organic matter when doing that like uh, jin jin's line still echoes in my head where he says i ate her that, that <laughs> line was dark as hell but like, we don't know if this, if by any chance Nia had children, if this is hundreds of years in the future, there's a possibility that might not be true. Because it'd be like, maybe it'd be weird if her children also like have this, if her children are like full Gormati, it'd be weird for them to have that aging. Be as a blade, you know, the rings are definitely, like, the rings are a blade weapon, you know? So like, maybe she's just a blade and we're being misled. But at the same time, the last game already had a driver and blade relationship. So it kind of would be going over the exact same thing. Or maybe the, the simplest answer could be the best one. She's just a Gormati girl and the Gormati just continued to, you know, live on. Okay, and in terms of my thoughts on Mio, I, I mean, honestly, she's a very well um, design character. I really do love a, a lot of different things uh, about her, though. I mean, I, I do love those cat ears and stuff like that. She's rocking and whatnot, though. I mean, I even went back through and went through the trailer and kind of looked at some of the animation she um, that she was shown doing, like, you know, wielding those uh, circular blades and stuff like that. I mean, it, it's just some little fine things I just like about her, or like some of the attention to detail about her design and stuff like that. And then obviously her voice direction, I think it sounds absolutely great so far. I will need to listen to a little bit more lines from her just to kind of get the, the full context of, you know, and see exactly how I would exactly lean whether or not I fully do like her though. But she is definitely a contender for one of the best girls. I think I know I like one little girl, um, a, a, maybe a little bit better, at least in terms of design wise and potential. But we'll, we'll see once we get more trailers of, you know, the different characters though. But I think Mio is definitely up there. I do love the design, the voice direction, everything else uh, about her, though. But yeah, so she seems like a pretty cool, fun little character, though, I will have to say. And also, one more thing that I just thought about here just a second ago. Um, the fact that she, that not only just her, but just the whole cast of characters, which we'll talk about more of them here in just a bit, though. It seems like the character designs are a lot more tame. Like, you look back at Xenoblade Chronicles 2, and you can easily note and you see all of that, like, you look at characters like Mithra, and you look at Pyra, and you look at some of the other blades and stuff like that. Like, golly, you, you could tell, you know, some of those those designs were, were really on that sexy side, I will have to say. Man, Mithra was so fine, though. But, but those thoughts aside, though, 
um it is a little more grounded so that way it won't put off certain kind of people that might have got putting off with xenoblade 2 so this will have a little bit more of a broadened appeal i mean yes it, it is gonna touch some people some way and other people's maybe not so much though but it is interesting the fact that all of these um characters are a little bit more grounded in design all I was going to say is that it kind of does make sense for the designs to be slightly more tame since it's a combination of 1 and 2. You know, have the more standard look from 1, have the bit exagger like exaggerated features from 2. Yeah, like, that is something to like to know. It is pretty standard with how they look. Well, yeah, they're not, all, not like... turn to like, uh, like oh, they look average or whatever, but like, it's like... I like how like these designs are different, or like... What's it called? Because, like, um, with Xenoblade 2, the issue with the designs is that with how inconsistent they were, but with, uh, with this game, like, they're more in line with, like, with, with their world that they come from. All right, so now we'll go ahead and talk about the other four main characters that are in addition to Noah as well oh, as Mia that are added up into the, into the mix, though. So starting off on the Noah side of things, we had Lance, who's an ally of Noah, who wields a great sword and doubles as a shield. And then you got Uni, a childhood friend of Noah, and Lance, who has a sharp tongue and rough personality, and she specializes in healing her allies. So that's on the Noah camp. Then you got the Mio camp. Uh, we got Tyon, who's a tactician who fights alongside Mio, using his genius and smart, and, you know, smart insight. And then you got Senna, who's a soldier and is an ally of Mio and Tyon. And despite her petite figure, Senna wields immense physical strength. So it's kind of interesting because you literally have Noah on one side, kind of representing the Xeno one side because literally when you look at Noah, Lance, and, and Uni, <laughs> that, that, that's literally like Shulk, you, you got Ryan, and then you got, um, Fiora. got, and you got Fiora right there. So you literally got one side representing that, and then you got the Xeno 2 side, where you got like Mio, who, Mio, who really kind of represents um, Nia in a way. Then you got Tyon. There's like one dude in Xenoblade 2 that has some like spec glasses. Kind of reminds me of him. And then you got Santa, who kind of reminds me of Tora a little bit, despite you know her not actually being like a little pup ball um, that, that little that Napalm was. But that that's interesting. Me. We that reminds me, we don't we, we don't have a Nopon party member. The closest thing we oh gosh, we I didn't even think about that. What the heck? And also, well, actually, no, we kind of do. Where those little origami things that Tyon makes are Nopon, or like at least turn into Nopon at one point hmm. in the trailer. So like, I'm and well, we see the Afro Nopon. There's a possibility. There's well, there's a possibility. I was just thinking about the Zard possibility the no pawn mechanic from future connected returns and that's how no pawns tie in hmm. like the whole what was that that whole little mechanic in future connected about like the no pawns like y you you played it right actually i i got through part of the way through future connected but then i was talking to sonic Q and i was like was it really yeah. necessary i mean maybe there was something like towards the tail end well, or something that kind of felt like that but i was i was almost like yeah. it wasn't I, doing too much for me yeah, basically, no pawns are like the new chain attack in Future Connected. Hmm. Where, like, the more, you know, the more no pawns you, like, collect through, like, side quests and stuff that join the crew or whatever. Strong, I think it was, like, the stronger your chain attack was. I, I, it was, like, something like that. Like, a cool way for gameplay to dictate, or, like, a cool way for side quests to dictate the battles. Yeah. So I guess in terms of kind of going in depth of, you know, some of these other four characters and some of their designs, what we kind of think about it, uh, we'll start off on the Noah camp first. You got Lance, who Lance basically looks like the um, cut and dry, basically looks like Adam from Torna, the Golden Country. Like, he literally has the same body physique. He has that same big great sword on his back, though. Like, you look at him, the only, and even the hair is basically the same style. Literally, the only difference between him and that is um, the fact, you know, his skin tone color. And you, you can kind of tell that, you know, he's not like just any kind of average old human or anything like that, though. But that, that's the main thing that kind of set him apart, though. So I, I do kind of like that design. And then you got over there Uni, who, Uni, at least for me, is best girl. I don't know about you, Sonic Q, but oh Uni, for me, he looks like it's going to be best girl. I mean, Mia could give her a run for her money, but it's between one of those two. Or uh, I'm probably going to wind up liking both of them, but I, I'm just kind of curious to see who's going to be at top. I don't know. Santa, he went to go get a snack, but yeah. Okay. But, uh, but yeah, Uni's good. I just think, well, here's the thing. Mio might be a basic-ass choice, 
but I like her design. She's she's epic. I don't know, man. I like I like Uni's design a lot. Oh no, shit! I just messed it up. I I meant that I like I like Mio's design a lot. No, it's you like, say Uni it is recorded okay. here, so oh, um, I'm gonna God. always go back and oh, pull this out. My God. You're one of us now. You're one of us. Yeah, yeah, okay. I then. Well, what, what? Both are good. How about that? Both are no, good. I mean, yeah, I agree. Both are good. Yeah. Like I, I don't think. Well, obviously, there's no characters in this this game that have the over-designed stuff. The only argument you could kind of make is the girl with the big hammer kind of looks a little bit baby, I guess. Like, what do you, know, you mean, looks, baby? I don't know, like a little bit like, bit you know, over the top anime kawaii design. Well, since you already of. since you already went over there, um, the other two that's in the Mio camp, Tyon and Senna, and I guess you're talking about Senna at the moment though. I mean, her design looks kind of nice. The only one that's kind of wearing like a two piece kind of get up, whatever though. I mean, she looks kind of nice though. I, I, I she ain't doing nothing crazy for me at least right now. I don't. <laughs> I can't remember if um. I know she probably said something in the trailer, but they didn't make it clear and evident when she might have had a speaking role in the trailer. Like, I don't like you, think you knew, yeah, you knew whenever um you knew when Noah was talking, you knew when Mio was talking, and you definitely knew um uh, when um when Uni was talking, um because you know she has like that little sassiness attitude, kind of takes the role in um Nia, Nia. a little bit because yeah. she has that little sass. I, I love I love girls that are a little sass like they ain't, you know cutesy uh -huh, or whatever though no, like like. Yeah. Like, no, she 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 wanted to throw down like look, look at her, want, just look yeah, at her, just look like, at her, man, yeah, look at her. Yeah, but anyway, yeah, you like anyway. a girl that can insult you. No, not insult. Has backbone. Like she ain't no pushover. She's the least likely one to cheat on you. Okay. Anyway, those thoughts oh, okay. aside though. Yeah. Um, yeah. Good one. Anyways, a really good core cast of characters, and they all look distinctively different. Like there's nothing that you can kind of look between two different characters and feel like. They look sort of kind of sameish. I mean, maybe the closest one is literally Noah and uh, Uni because the both of them were childhood friends, though. But yeah, and I guess while we're also on the topic of characters, and it might be one of the last things I might have to point out with this though, is the fact that um, traditionally in the past Xenoblade games, like in Xenoblade Chronicles One, there was a love interest. You, you know, you got over there, you got Shulk, oh. and you got Fiora, and then technically in Xenoblade Chronicles Two. You make you spice it up a little bit. It was like one dude, two girls. I, I was like, okay, okay, Rex, I see you over there uh, with Mithra and Pyro over there. Now in this one, I'm kind of curious if something were to happen, would it technically be Noah and Mia, Mio, because they're both technically the main protagonists, or would they actually? Because usually, and especially if you watch anime and you watch a bunch of shows and all of that stuff, typically the childhood friend ain't gonna normally get her. So I, I feel kind of bad if. You know, if uh, Uni over there happens to be like Melia in like in Xenoblade Chronicles One, or they could twist it and it could be something completely different. But typically, Sorry. the main protagonist doesn't usually go for a side person. But I don't know. I just wanted to throw that out you, there. You say that, but in Xenoblade One, he gets with the, his childhood friend. Fiora. No, now they they broke the rule in that one. So I was like, okay, and she was How? technically almost kind of like a main character, but really only existed in the yeah, first is. part of the game Fiora, and the last part of the game so Fiora I mean, yeah. is a main character and, and it she does not reappear in the last part of the game mecha fiora is like at least chapter seven i feel it's like the ten. later half i could say later half because she but is yeah, missing for like, a good chunk of what uh, the, the main basic course. of what you're doing that's all but i like, was saying you know, oh yeah she was missing for a while but she was a main character she motivated show her whole her death motivates Shulk to go do what he does. Shulk wouldn't be on that adventure if it, if they didn't take Fiora from him. You yeah. know what I mean? Like yeah. he, like you know they, you know, even you know even Orion's like go get her or with, I don't know what he says. He's like oh yeah, put your Minotto in her. No man, that, that, that's over the top, man. We, this, oh yeah, this. that's another thing we haven't even discussed. We're gonna have a Minato type thing, a magic sword. The, mm. we, we're gonna have well, i wonder if uh actually from what i've seen so far maybe the sword he has isn't some kind of legendary sword because we don't really have any indication that there's gonna be a big legendary item in this game you know what i mean no i like feel like the, it feels like a traditional uh, one that might be relying on ether energy i feel like it's like 
because you know from the beginning of xenoblade one and two like from those first trailers you know we knew like you know the monado was the big ancient item and then the aegis was the big thing that everyone was after in two you don't have that in three so far at least maybe i'm maybe i'm wrong but like you don't have this one object that everyone's after it just seems like you know they're trying to you know solve fix the war but like mm -hmm. we don't know what they're after we don't know what they're fighting for yeah that is true it could i don't know like it could just be over the land over resources but like the resources thing would be weird because you know you know both worlds were like running out of resources until the ending you know you know in xenoblade 2 they were running out of land so more ordain was conquering trying to conquer other places for more land but then at the end of the game everything's good because you know they have this big land mass now mm -hmm. i think it would just be kind of weird to tread over that plot line again having the one big thingamajig that everyone's after that solves the plot because that's kind of what the monado was like, you know, the Monado really didn't have an explanation. And also, the whole story with the Monado is over. Because, you know, you know, if Anto, if, if Alvis really was one of the three Aegises, then that was his Monado, like, the, the Monado was his. But, like, also, it's weird. Because the Monado that Shulk uses was Zanza's Monado. But it wasn't. Because, you know, Shulk creates the Monado, like, the true Monado. Mm -hmm with his own energy or like alvis no th okay my theory when when klaus recreated the universe he created another like you know for each god there was a new monado the monado if i had to make a guess just like in lore significance a monado represents the power of a god so in xenoblade th 2 there was you know three aegises three godlike beings each having a monado Xenoblade 1, you had Maynith and Zanza, each had a Monado, Alvis was, uh, Alvis was an Aegis, so he summoned his Monado to help Shulk beat Zanza, because, you know, because, you know, Alvis was obviously, you know, obviously, you know, Zan Zanza was like, you know, Al Alvis is probably on my side, but he's not, Alvis is like, hey, fuck you, fuck you, I'm a, I'm a computer program, and I'm, I'm gonna kill you. So, next up on the docket, now that we talked about the characters and stuff, you know, we have the basic storyline premises of how the, the game is basically going to build and basically operate and stuff like that, though. Now, and then we talked about the characters. Now we, we know our main characters and groups of people, though. So now it's about time to look at this trailer in depth and start kind of going piece by piece of what we actually get to see as it actually plays out in this trailer, though. So, you know, starting off at the very beginning, um, we, we, we get to see, we get to see Noah, because now we know his name. So Noah, he's playing this flute. When Noah and Mio play those flutes, they essentially, when they're playing those flutes, they're playing, you know, they're giving respect to those that have passed on, um, from this world to the next, you know, due to all the endless fighting that they're doing between the, the two camps of people and stuff like that, though. So that, that's this. It's, it's really interesting to kind of think about that. And there's also going to be a lot more emphasis on the flute, though. And then also, um, I think, um, what was it? Man, I think Steven mentioned this a little um, earlier off the air, though. But he mentioned that, um, or it was Sonic, Steven, Steven Sonic, he wanted the two. Anyway, um, the fact that those particles that you see right there, very similar to how Xenoblade 3's logo is. Because if you look at Xenoblade 1, 2, and 3's logo, one had the kanji kind of going up in there for the monado two power representation for the fire three you look like you see some kind of particle-ish kind of soul thing that's all floating around them right there though so we're already kind of making that connection and tie right there though and it does kind of make sense why that is playing out though and then the first main major shot that we see is all of these people rushing in with blades and everything with a giant mech behind them and then sonic you said Man, that is one big massive mech. It's, so. it's it's interesting to think that, you know, obviously the the Homs, the the Hyantia, the 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 Machina, they're, they're, they're like after the you know the whole ending with Xenoblade One and you know Future Connected, it would stand to reason like hey, yeah they built a society together and they're all fighting as one force, so obviously they would have. The, 
it, it, it's, it's interesting to think like you know like the beginning of Xenoblade 1 they're fighting against the Mechons you know the the mech like the whole Mechon and now here they are they have their own mech uh to like to fight in and and it's, so, them. It's, so, it's so cool they join forces and, yeah. and, and like me, obviously in the, well, at the at, in future connected you, you see how they're, they're like yeah we don't want to like uh you know talk with you we don't want to like could like uh we just want to like stay our own like because like after the whole thing with the uh, with the uh, at the end of the xenoblade one but, but now here they are it's just it's so cool to look front. at okay that's one it, thing i never sorry unified that's one thing I never understood about Xenoblade 1. Answer this for me, Santa Hugh. No, but yes. All the other Machina, like, show that, like, they don't agree with Ag Agil's actions. Like, you know, they abandoned Agil. Yeah. Who produces the Mechon, then? Is he single-handedly producing all the Mechon? Are they being mass-produced, I guess? There's, like, a mass factory within the Mechonis. Oh, like, oh, yeah, it was, like, as you it go was from like the, the core. From, like, yeah, as you go from, like, the, the leg up to, like, the... To the where Eggles at, obviously. Yeah, like, like I'm guessing, I'm guessing they originally created the Mechon, the Mechon, in in the fight with Zanza. The Zanza, I like how they say Zanza a lot in game, even though it's Zanza. I just yeah. call it Zanza. But yeah, like you know, they created the Mechon in the fight against Zanza, probably as a, if I had to make a guess, probably as a countermeasure to 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 Lethia. Like, <laughs> which would make a lot of sense. Because they're, you know, they're mechanical. They probably are a lot harder to kill. Maybe, maybe Mechonis was winning at one point. Well, you have to remember, and... like the with Bionis, like you know how the Monado seals like the ether energy. Yeah. That's different for Mechonis, which is why. Oh like, yeah. Yeah. Mhm. Mm oh yeah. Um. So... But finish, you, finish your food, pizza? man. He uh -huh. is. Just finish your food. That's what I did. Man, he's so unprofessional, man. At least you, you got the the audacity to to mute your stuff, but okay. uh, he okay. doesn't. No, I while just went were, to the okay. I just went to the t the kitchen table and just like ate in peace. All right, well, Saniki, while you were gone, I was saying how I thought of a theory, and my theory was, you know, when the Klaus theory, yeah, when Klaus created the Xenoblade One world, he created a new trinity of Monados. because like all the Aegises in Xenoblade. All right, well, that was just my theory because all the Aegises in Xenoblade. To have Monados because you know they're the Aegises. No, that's Steven, just that, yeah, that, 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 that is what they are. Yeah, but well, you one have, thing you I have, never you got... have Pyramithra as Numa, you have yeah, uh, I know. you have Malos as Logos, and you have Alvis as Ontos. Yeah, I know, no, but my theory was that, like, you know, when Shulk gets the uh, what was it like, is it the true form of the Monado he gets, or a Monado 3? I forgot what they called it. No, it is, it, it, it is the true form of Monado. Yeah, my theory was that that's Alvis's. That's Alvis's Monado. Obviously, we've seen. Yeah, that's that's Alvis's Monado. We already seen the other Xenoblade Two Aegis Monados. My theory was that one thing that never made sense to me when I played Xenoblade One was why Zanza and Maynath had Monados. And my theory was that it's just because my theory was that the Monados represent the force of godly beings, like the Aegises. You could consider godly beings. They have the power to destroy the world, after all. No. Yeah, you're, you're on that. Yeah, so the Monado, the Xenoblades themselves it's why it's, are it's why it's why it's why they're not they're not Xenoblade. <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm just joking. <laughs> so like, yeah, no, at the Xenoblade. at the end, even Zanza was like that symbol when Shulk was like holding the true Monado. Well, yeah, because it was like I guess he recognized it from his original experiments with the conduit, because like the conduit was around. Because obviously in Xenoblade Two, I know it's a retcon and all, but we see the con the conduit existed. When he was still Klaus, like you know, he knew about all the science shit. Like he doesn't. From what we see in Xenoblade One, he doesn't seem to have lost his memory of the event. You know, he seems like you know, he doesn't seem remorse. I don't know. He doesn't seem remorseful that he did it. Like the you know, Xenoblade Two's Klaus does. Well, well, yeah, that, that's the thing. They're split. One good side, the other one's like bad. Yeah, or at least one has judgment and one. Uh, well, one thinks what he did was right, one thinks what he did was wrong, and that just made them good and evil. Yeah, at, le at least for the most part. So, ooh, shoot, but yeah, so it it's gonna go down at least when we when we see this, and I feel like at least with this op with this one scene that opened off with the trailer, 
I imagine this is like some of the very first few opening moments of the game. It just kind of got that vibe just to kind of, you know, show the setup, the epicness, proportions, and what's basically at stake and basically throw you right off in the plot points from the very beginning, though. So, yeah, so I think that was about it in terms of that first little thing. So we're going to go ahead and resume it on at least a little further on is the trailer, though. Uh, then, then we got, oh, which I think it plays right into this next event because then we see Noah on one side and he, he jumps off of something. He was riding something in that trailer. He literally jumps off of that and lands on the ground like that. Pretty cool fashion, Wait. though. Oh, it what? was Metcon motorcycles. Yeah. Oh, no, that, 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 that's the thing. Like, like later on the trailer, it shows them on a on a boat just, like, traveling on the water. Well, like, like, yeah, Mech Mechon speedboat. Yeah, that would make okay. traversing so much faster, and I hope that is a thing, you know? Oh, yeah, because Xenoblade has some massive maps sometimes, and, and if it weren't for the creek and traveling like, half the time, you'd be like, dang. No, honestly, honestly, like, I don't mind because, like, I love exploring the world of Xenoblade. They do, Monolith just does a fantastic job on that. Oh, yeah. But, like, absolutely. obviously, when you're, when you're, like, re... When you're going back to like like air older pastor, areas, you, like, like yeah, complete side quests, it would be, yeah. it would be, it would be okay. better to have like a something to like you know drive around, you know. Yeah, I really hated one feature in Xenoblade 2 that just made me not want to explore, and that was the cloud sea tide. Like I, I don't know. Oh I never, yeah, I, that feature was stupid because like the thing that didn't make sense. It's not like it was. It's not like when it was low tide, there were all these new areas you could access. It wasn't a motivating factor. What it did was make it so you have to keep sleeping until you get low tide. That's all it did. And it's not like high tide has unique things. It's just only low tide. If you don't have low tide, you just can't explore as much. And also, that the key whole issue thing... with Xenoblade too, like it doesn't really, you don't really like feel the whole uh, desire to explore. Like compared well, yeah. to one, because you get experience points like when in one, you don't do you don't get that in, in Xenoblade. Yeah, too. that's too. Oh yeah. I was yeah. gonna say. I, oh yeah, yeah, I do remember that. Yeah, I I literally yeah. would go out yeah. and scout a whole bunch, almost kind of similar like Breath of the Wild. Like you, you kind of wanted to see what was out there first and getting and, experience, and get experience, so. kind of get the layout of the land. It allows you to fast travel a little bit more, so it did give you the incentive, um, uh, okay. good incentive to go out and look at yeah. out the world. That reminded me, one of my favorite things about Xenoblade 1 is how the speedrun clips into an area very late in the game and it gives you like so much experience you immediately turn to level 30 from level 1. Because it's like, it scales. It gives you scaled XP. If you're in a late no, game that's area... that's how I went from level 10 to like XP. level 50. Yeah, didn't you do that? Yeah, you said yeah, something. Yeah, I did that. I did that. No, I did on awesome. the I did I did on the 3DS oh. and, like, and I did on the Switch as well. Yeah, but and they I was tried to like they tried to fix it, but then there, there was like another way to do it too. But yeah, I was gonna say one of my favorite one of my favorite things in this like in Xenoblade One is how yeah it, it encourages you by giving you XP like in Xenoblade I, I Two. I hope they keep that in in three. Yeah, but like I was saying, the whole low tide thing was just another example of how. Like, you know, they segmented off, and it was very small areas. Like, there was only, like, one area in Gormot that you needed low tide for, which, I don't know. Hmm. Some of the areas in Xenoblade 2 felt a little bit too big. Like, you know, Gormot, obviously, is, like, you know, the main big area. It's supposed to be the guy we're playing the game. But then, well, I, I never got why Morardane was so big and had so many levels to it. Like, you don't really... Well, this also, is a temper... Xenoblade 3 dis yeah. discussion. Also, no, I know, no, this is again. Xenoblade 3, bro. Okay. Well, in order to talk about Xenoblade 2, 3, you need to talk about the negatives of Xenoblade 1 and 2 we and talk about don't. how... You don't, have, already, to, you like, don't have to go you, off the you, deep no, end. You no, can make you references, know, already, but... Just, okay. You've already discussed it, but like, you're, you're just rambling. Is what, I'll give, is what a, I'll give a better example. You know that one area where you fight Jin once and then you leave Temperantia? That area has no right being as big as it is. That's all I'll say. Xenoblade 3, I hope they fix that. I hope they make it... Well, I was going to say one hope for Xenoblade 3 is making it a true open world. Seamless. But that's probably not going to happen. I mean... Mm. Yeah. Well, like, it's, one I don't, land but it's not really anything... There, there wasn't... Yeah. I didn't really find any issues with the open world with like oh. one or two. I had no issue, I just thought it was kind of weird that you always needed the fast travel between Titans, while in Xenoblade 1 there was a way to get to every single place. Hmm. 
But yeah. Maybe because like, the tie the tie are like walking around and like they're always moving. Well yeah, that obviously. Just Meanwhile Bionis McConnell are just standing there. It's just weird. Because like there's certain points in the story of Xenoblade 2 where they make you take boats to places, I guess just for just for realism, I guess, but like, I, it never worked for me because you can just fast travel there right after. Yeah, so I guess that's basically all the stuff you're able to pull from the the encounter. Well, shoot, I felt like I said that, and then I was like, bruh, y'all started talking so much, I was like, bruh. I'm talking about the open world. I was just like, y'all went to the open world, and you're I was like, rambling. you were rambling so uh, long. Uh, the fact that I was talking about Noah, and then I was like, okay, Noah is facing Mio. And then it stopped right there and then went to open world. Not even sure how the heck that happened. But anyway, you saw these two fighting back and forth, though. So you can tell instantly right there, like, like you have Mio's, wait, yeah, you have Mio's camp on one side and you had Noah's camp fighting on the other side. So they were already at two different sides of the world war. And I don't know what actually gets them to kind of side by each other to actually kind of, you know, fight as a uniform front. Because it seems like both of them, Wait, I, I'm trying to think back into the words of what they said in the trailer, though. Uh, I think Mio was saying we're fighting because there are enemies or something like that. And I thought one of them also said, like, they're not your friends anymore or something like that. So maybe at some point they did have, like, a unified connection or something like that. The war broke out and they had to split them up. But then they had to come back together. I, at least from what I've been seeing in the trailer and what I've been hearing, that's some of the thoughts have been kind of running in my mind right there though but uh y'all got any thoughts about you know the sides that they're on like this or anything i just said uh we just have to wait and see on that i honestly can't like like um put my thoughts on it because we don't know anything they're just all we know is that they've been fighting for a very long time and obviously the leaders for both factions are reoccurring characters yeah uh, returning characters i mean they're which, characters that have been confirmed to be able to live for hundreds of years. Combined, which, you know, yeah, we'll, we'll get to that once we once we get to that part of the trailer, though. But that's basically I, it on that one. You, you got to see uh, the other characters jump. Some of their other side characters, the ones they know from childhood and stuff, damn. jumping up in there, though. And then um, you, you see one shot where it was just Noah and Mio playing their flutes. Not sure if that was, you know during the peaceful times where they were able to be friends or if it's after the fact when they joined back up together though but um Bedard, those flutes are definitely gonna have um a very strong importance though what were you saying steven can you can you go back and enhance go back a bit but before that before the flute shot before the flute oh, shot a little no 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 that, before, no no you're gonna talk about that's supposedly uh the like, you're talking about the, the girl daughter. you're talking about the that girl playing the, the that's, that's supposedly the daughter of shulk and fiora well i i hmm. it kind of looks like it but no i was saying if it is the daughter of both of them then that means it can't be more than a hundred years at the well, most they, they just us assuming we don't know that's right. just, we'll go back i feel i feel like you, maybe like it'll be something skipped, close but you've skipped over van dam twice what the fuck well, why is there a guy that looks very similar to Van Damme in this trailer? He has the exact same scar, basically same hairstyle. I'm intrigued. Maybe Van Damme. No, that had, man's like, a punk. I don't like that man. I know he did something. Maybe. Bad. I don't no, know. Xeno no. One, I, Zeno One vibes just gave me a bad feeling my, about characters no, no. like my, that. <laughs> my theory was that this was like somehow like an old version of Zeke that's styled after Van Damme, but like I'm, it's probably Zeke just had, Van Damme. Zeke has white hair. He doesn't have black hair. Yeah. Huh? And also, you can hear Van Damme's voice in the trailer, apparently. That's what people have said online, is that you can literally hear Van Damme. You think Damme people will lie on, on the internet? Okay, then. Mm. We don't know. We, we maybe, don't know, like, like, you, maybe. If you have, like, a source for that, then maybe. Well, the one thing I can absolutely say is that he has the exact same scar and hairstyle, though. Well, we're not denying that. <laughs> oh, no, I just... Yeah, like, that's... I like that. I'm happy that, like, if it, well, obviously it's probably not Van Damme because he was like an Orion and this looks like a Homs. I don't know. Homs, that... human, we don't know. Yeah. Same yeah. thing, really. Something like that. Well, yeah, but he was he was Orion, which we haven't seen any Orions. And one thing I never got are Ardanians just humans or are they their own race? Because our, our, you know, Ardanian was like an empire that took over places. Hmm. Yeah, they are humans. They're they're just they're just one more Ardain. It's kind of okay. like uh, it's kind of like a different country, you know. But like Lethurians are described as like their own race as I mean, well. 
Right? They say, like, only... Well, there's that one door that only the Therians can open that Adam put for the Pyra seal. So, if only the Therians can open it, that's fucking weird. Yeah, so I guess moving on to the, the next little parts of the trailer, we, we see more of them fighting against each other. And then we finally get some beautiful shots. And I, I do mean some gorgeous shots of some of the open worlds and stuff that's like, like that. The, that's, the, that's, the, that's the knee, isn't it? That uh, reminds me of the knee. Yeah, and I, and I guess they can do it somewhat similar to like Xeno 1 where I guess, you know, different parts of the body, like where is the, the what is it? Whether it's the Titan or whether it's probably the, the sword blade. But then again, there were some shots where you were looking up at the blade. So then I, that makes me think, are they actually on like an actual ground surface or no? Because there's no, I don't feel like I got the sense there's a cloud. See, I don't know. This world's going to be interesting. Like, I feel like some of it's going to be on that dead Titan. Some of it's probably going to be on the blade. And I don't know. There's some other locations though, but um, I'm not sure if that is the knee or not though. But uh, it, it is interesting nonetheless. We get, we get to see that shot right there. Wait, isn't that... All right, now the shot I'm looking at right now, look on the left side. Doesn't that look like teeth to you? What teeth? Like like in the top left corner, like all of them jagged stuff that's coming out of the... It's like a rock formation. It looks like teeth, at least to me. That area? That might be a titan. Yeah, so I'm thinking that's a titan right there. That looked like Araya. That no, no. Look, look in the middle. The top middle. It's like the the portion of Araya that's split. That's the Araya split in half. That's the Orion Titan split in half. Right? So maybe that's the mouth right there. But then you see over there, just the, you, the gap over there is the, yeah. the part that split where the clouds cutting through essentially. Yeah, I wonder if like maybe there's a city still in there. Maybe Fonsamima is still there. Hmm. But like, or maybe it's just like ruins. Yeah. But, yes. like, uh, that area, that's an area from Future Connected, right? This is Bayana's shoulder. No. That's no. what I, I Someone said. You cut off. Yeah, you cut off. Someone connected this area to a place in Xenoblade 1. Uh, someone connected this area to a place in Xenoblade 1. I just can't mm. find the image. Hmm. But yes. No, it still looks like Gower planes, but, like, from afar. Yeah, it Maybe. really does. Maybe that's just the height. It doesn't. I didn't remember Gower planes being having that much vertical space going up, mm. except for like the little place that goes into Colony Six. Like the area going into Colony Six has a bit of cliffs. Yeah, so I think that's about but it. I, we can pull from that one. Let's let's look I know over for a another fact, shot. That platform. I know for a fact that that platform was from one of like Xenoblade One though. Okay. Uh, okay, and I and think someone, in this in this new shot right here this is what i was talking about earlier well this is the part that really started confusing me uh you get to see the the, the big um the mechon soar way over there off in the distance and i was like wait a minute so are, are we on the ground or is this a different part of the titan we're standing on or something like that though but some some very interesting shots right here some very interesting ones wonder if the mechon sword is gonna be like the final area that you climb in the game or like it's gonna be a dungeon of sorts Oh, it could. I wouldn't put it out there saying it is it, but it would be interesting. And then uh, we saw that one there. And, and, and it's just these little shots right here. It's just like you see all this mech and stuff going on right there. It, it, it just showed it like different. Ca Which, uh, another thing, I guess you could technically pull it out. You're controlling all these different characters running in all of these different environments. If you hadn't thought about that before. So a similar feature to how it was in Single Lake Chronicles 1. Where you can actually choose which characters you want to be running around in the open world. You're not necessarily tied to just two. one person. I think, yeah, you were able to do it in two. Just just confirming that you can you can control any character you want. Although, if you put in certain situations where certain party members have to leave for whatever reasons, then obviously that would restrict who you can control. But that that is coming back, at least from the shots we're given so far. Also, this looks that looked like a Keves city, and this looks like an Agnes city. Yeah. Like, I'll, with that, it's like some sort of Agnes battle vehicle, I guess. I was going to say, like, I wonder if we're going to fight these big vehicles or, like, if we're going to try to make peace within the conflict. No, we're not going to fight them. We're going to get up in there and fight other things. That's your only little representation of X you're going to get up in this series. <laughs> I'm just going to call you're that right now. Giant mech battles. 
No, because you, you know, like you had them little mechs and stuff that like literally like Mithra kind of called upon, and she was able to control that. Like it, it's gonna be like us hopping up in one of those things. I, I'm calling it right now. I'm calling. We, we're gonna control some of these mechs. The only closest representation we're getting to X. I was just gonna throw that out there though. But yeah, I, I just love all of these does, environments though. Kevest does have like face mechon that they've pioneered. Like you see in the trailer of some soldiers piloting face mechon. Yeah. Yeah, they made it safe. Yep. Yeah. Now, it Are does look some... like, I guess, in terms of party... It's like it, Magna it... Forest, isn't it? Um, maybe? Maybe? I would love to visit Magna Forest again. Yeah. But it is interesting, because I guess... Well, no, technically, correct me if I was wrong, in past games for Xenoblade Chronicles 1 and 2, you could have your whole party running behind you, right? It's just when you started battle, you only hit Control 3, right? Oh, you've seen you seen all of them behind you at all times. No, um, no, not in one, but in two not they in one. they had it to where like you had your you know your drivers and then you had your blades following you, but like only one at a time. Just like there's like six like at a time oh, you see on screen. Right. Well, you, that and is it, true. It's something that it's something that they that Monolith has, has always wanted to do. They've all they wanted to like have your entire party on the screen, but they 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 haven't been able to. And but, then how, yeah, how did it work with Xenoblade right Chronicles I mean, one? So you had, you know, your you just had your like your your three squad, you know, uh, for example, Shulk, uh, Ryan, and Fiora. Okay, yeah. So you only had three of them out in the overworld at any given time. Now this is interesting because in this shot we see four people. We see uh, we see Noah there. Yeah. We see Mio, yeah. and then we see the other two. So it makes me think. Number one, either they're able to show more characters off in the in the open world as you're traversing, or number two, are we actually going up in combat members and when we actually get to start a battle, are we going from three to four? That we I, don't know, I, I, but it is interesting the fact that we're having one more additional person out here on the field. I think that'd be better. I think three to four would be better because, you know, you'd be able to have more of your, you know, you could have more teammates and still have your healer in the party could have like your main attacker your main defender your all around and your healer all in one party yeah because i would say this i think when i was running through xenoblade one especially one since that's pressure on my mind i know i like to have two attackers ish and then one healer because for some reason for me tanks I, I don't know they just didn't mesh that well at least with my play style so i'd rather have you know like my all arounder like being shulk and then someone that was hitting hot hard like um like dumb band and then, um, and then I had a healer at, at the very end of the game. So I was like, I don't know. That's how I was working with. But yeah, four, then I could actually squeeze in a tank and take some blows when I really need to take. Because, you know, certain enemies, just, they just pound you up real good. And it's just like, golly. I was like, bro, what the heck is this doing all this damage on I me, though? For a fact, no one used Sharla. Absolutely nobody. Mm. And that's sad. I don't know. She like better it's characters <laughs> yeah like no like, shulk, Rick, shulk shulk was a better healer okay no thing. no yeah shulk is a better healer and Rick, ricky is also a better healer and has more tank potential so yeah bro what are you talking about i was using charlotte for like the whole length of the game i actually used it all the way through what the heck Wait, oh. i mean were you struggling was that why it wasn't that i was struggling it's just that i just like the consistent healing she was giving off well no well hold on hold on no, I think yeah. I was rotating oh, her so, yeah. out. I was so, rotating yeah. her out between her <laughs> and oh, um, somebody wait, else. Wait, 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 wait. wait. I, so, I, I just like looking at her, to be yeah, honest, to be honest. So, like, should we call her the seventh, or, you know? No, mm -hmm. I'm not, we're, we've spoiled enough in this review. Or this you know, thing. Yeah, you're right. Forget it. Okay, it, spoilers ahead. All right, Zard, put like a siren sound effect. Spoilers for Xenoblade Chronicles. Bro, no, 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 no. I can't even put that because y'all talked about Wait. spoilers way back when, earlier in this well, discussion, when we were talking the about the um about y'all's theories. All right. No, it... all right. So the seventh. Okay, so the seventh party member in Xenoblade Chronicles one is Mecha Fiora. There you go. He's. Yeah. You already Lord. mentioned Mecha Fiora earlier on in this discussion. Maybe this, I did. That ain't Maybe no, I... that ain't no. Yeah. Anyway. 
Okay, so anyway, yeah. though, but that, I think that was about it in terms of um, what was going on, at least in that one shot and scene. Then we get to see a lot of different creatures and stuff. I did like that one little scene where they're swimming and stuff. Like, literally, all you were doing is like, they're swimming on the ground and stuff. No, you got Neo, like, jumping out of the water like a freaking dolphin, <laughs> doing little things like that. I was like, so the traversing against this world is going to be pretty cool um, as well, though. And then that, like the big action shot. Wait, that right there it kind of looked like Tyan was fighting Mio, or am I like the big like Mio was dodging the little origami things? And also, look, you have yeah. Look, you had the you had. Wait, the wait, go back, go, go back to the no yeah. punch. Yeah. Okay, I, yeah, the no punch. I kind of, I kind of, I kind of hope we do get no punch also, uh, on the party team. Also, also right like, there, isn't that, that's like Ricky. That's Ricky. No, no, that's, that's Ricky Jr. Isn't it? No, 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 that's Rex Jr. right there. Like, look at, look at the hairstyle. Oh, Rex. Maybe, Bob, no, like maybe Bob Ross Pond. Maybe Bruh. Tora, maybe Tora found a way to put like one of those, you know, things inside a poppy, and then he had kids. Bruh. I mean, yeah. <laughs> he went all he... blushy, blushy, crushy. Also, okay. Poppy, Poppy could appear. She's a robot. She doesn't age. Yeah, she, she could. She could. She be could. I, don't I think would she very, would. I would very much like. I would, to see Poppy I would love again. to see Poppy appear. She's like only yeah, cutie no, pie Poppy. form. Only cutie pie form. No, well the canon, no the canon last form of Poppy is Poppy QT. You don't like cutie pie is a side quest, and also yeah. I don't care. Her. Cutie pie also, better show up in there because so that she, way it shows that she age. She, she reverts back to Poppy. She doesn't age. Like a bunch of I, 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 I know, but 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 that way they can say she matured. I don't know. Well, yeah, that's what the make whole the point stretch. Of it was. Make the stretch. Move they, the goalposts no, if you the, had that's to. Like, that's the point of like of that side quest. Like she's always growing. Yeah, you know she's growing all right. Ooh. Bruh. But anyway, Boy. so so yeah, so no pawns do exist in this game. Um, you know, those are the only that. ones we see. Those yeah. are literally the only ones we see, which makes me think that in this world with war, they're either a secluded race again, like they were in Xenoblade Two, or they're like dying. Where it's, they're almost extinct. Bruh. And also, they have anime eyes, so there must have been some kind of stupid as it sounds, maybe some crossbreeding. Oh god. Oh no, you're going you're going out the deep end. I'll catch you. I'll catch you off right there. They are the only no pawns with anime eyes. They are literally the only no pawns that have regular Xenoblade eyes. Bro. So like, there what has to you? be a reason for that. Bro. But, no, I, I, no, I'm, like, cu I'm no, cutting you. I'm cutting you off, Steven. I'm cutting cut you off. Right there. I'm cut cutting you off. Thanks. I'm cutting That's you such off. A, a weird thing to say. It, it, it is weird. All of the no ponds have like, like these beady eyes. It's true though. All of the no ponds have these little beady eyes, and these are the only ones that have anime eyes. You want to explain that? All right, so uh, I explain that. I explain just, that right maybe, now because the fact maybe that they um just, they just change the design. Hello. Yeah, but um, but I, I, I don't, don't know because I'm literally rewinding it, it, back to it. It doesn't have to be. Oh, did they fucked human men. No, bro, chill. Bro, no, that, that's his that's his character design and art direction. Yeah, like, that's I, his I like that. Design. Yeah. If if that was the case, then how come like the girl one has like different eyes from like the, from from the, the male yeah, one? like the like the girl one has a little sparkle in her eye. The, the male one is just like a just a solid blue with just a singular dot. Like that's just that's just yeah. art direction character design. Thank and, you for meeting Steven. <laughs> like <laughs> such a. Oh, I don't want to think about that. Yeah, so all right, we'll, we'll go ahead and move over to the next thing. I had to zoom in on my shot of... Um, um, Wait, on Unity. On Uni. Yeah, I, I was about to get to it. I, I was about to... I had to show my shot of Uni over here because, uh, man, she looking fine in that one little shot right there. She looking real fine now. Anyway, though, but, but yeah, so we, we get to see her. You get to see the other two. Um, they're fighting, dishing it out right here. Then this is where the little the plot thickens a little bit. I'm talking about thickening like with like three C's over here, like that thick. Mm -hmm. Because we, we get to see a shot of um we get to see a shot of Melia over here. Or what we think are... What are you talking about? Melia's like thick. No 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 no. I wasn't saying the character was thick. I was talking about the plot being thick. And not oh, actually her being like No 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 she flat chested man what you talking about anyway no, she's not. <laughs> what are you talking about <laughs> I'm just kidding I'm just seeing your reaction <laughs> What are you talking about Bro alright alright Bro you're gonna su you're gonna summon Mario and you're gonna get Oh <laughs> no 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 I I'm muting that monkey if he comes up in there I'm sorry <laughs> I'm <laughs> sorry. Anyway, hey, <laughs> anyway, oh, we have oh a good fun God. time with these discussions. Anyway, 
All right, so we get to see a shot of Melia right here. And I'm like, what the actual heck? Or at least what we think. I feel like I'm 90% sure that this is a shot of her. But, you know, looking at her, vo oh, looking is. at her, it, it screams that out if you play Xenoblade Chronicles 1. Well, like but her, it's not... Well, her, her wings, the way her hair is, is like, done. Like, because you have to remember, like, like the high end to you, like, the wings, they're supposed to be bigger. But, like, when they're short, that means they're, it's a, it's a cross speed between a high end and a Homs. Oh, yeah. Melia. Yeah, you're right about that. Well, also, nope. the fact we hear her voice, like, you know, we, we hear her voice. It's Melia. She talks in the trailer. I mean, yeah, it, it's very similar, but they do make it a little bit different, like, as if, like, you know, she, like, aged a little well, bit she, in the voice. And, and two, I think they're, well, because they're wearing well, masks as well, remember, it's partially covered up. You have to voice. remember, like, even the voice actor, like, for Melia, like, when she came back for Definitive Edition, she sounded different. She and did sound, yeah, you know, yeah, she did she sound different. Whole, she she kind of is the whole reason that Xenoblade Three leaked in the first place, so yeah. But a yeah, bit. yeah. So we saw a shot of her, and then, interestingly enough, where you got Xeno One, you got Xeno Two representation. We get to see a shot of somebody that looks really close and similar to Nia. Same thing. It is ninety yeah. percent sure that that's her, unless they oh, pull it's... some flip reversal and stuff and say, "Oh no, this is just you a different Nia from a different like, al alternate universe." But I'm like pretty the, sure it is she her. She has the same. She has the same dress, the same core crystal, the same like ears. Like no, that is, like no, like look at like how tall her ears are. That is Nia. Okay, these masks are kind of a weird design decision. I like the mask. Good. Well, Melia's I like a lot. This one's kind of weird to me. I like, no, I like Nia's more actually for me. Ah. Uh. Yeah. No, yeah, I like Nia's a little better than Melia's though. But it does kind of makes you think, I guess, for those that play Xeno 1 and 2, it screams out, you probably already know who these characters are, though. But then again, it makes you think, well, if most people probably already know what these characters are. Why well, leave the mask? But then I guess if, if you're new to the franchise series, then it kind of gives well, a little... Gives you a little something to look forward to, like well, who are these people? I was about to say, it's, it's actually a really good choice because fans of the fans will recognize them, but still, you know, be excited for the reveal that it is them. Like, you know, it gives a little bit of theory room, but then people that haven't played the games are going to be completely oblivious. But then they're going to play this game. You know, well, people that are new are going to play this. Play game this and game. Go back, go back play previous ones, and then imagine, be like, oh. yeah. imagine, also, imagine yeah, not then, playing one or two when like well, all no, the was, hype is like. Yeah. I was about to say, there's also going to be a lot of people that seen this trailer go back and play them before the third one releases, and then are shocked. I mean, and I can I can there. personally relate with them because technically I played Xenoblade Chronicles two first, went back and played Xenoblade Chronicles one, Dang. and then figured out all the the. You know what was happening simultaneously with Xenos one and two stores. Like I got to piece it together that way. An interesting, uh, an interesting way it. to go back and do that. But I think you, Sonic, you played one and two, right? I played the Wii. I didn't beat it, but I did play the 3DS one in sizzling 144p. And I did beat 144p. it. 144p. And then when Definitive Edition was announced, like, oh okay, pre-ordered it. One thing I vividly remember was like Etika watching the cutscene where it reveals the two games are connected and him freaking out. <sighs> that so, was such a um, what's it called? That was such a misleading title to call it Future Connected when it was really just about the future of the Hyantia. Well, yeah. It kind of well, to be honest, the future, well, the future for both of them are connected, but yeah. Hmm. Like it's no, leading. not really. It, it didn't. It didn't go yeah. into anything about the rift. It was oh, mainly yeah. just about it's the Hyantia. They well, should have yeah, just it's... like called it that, and then like set that up. rift was like, oh, I wonder if that's connecting both games, not like the well, title or anything. I'm pretty yeah. sure. Well, I'm pretty sure that's kind of what they already did. Was you know like and well, the, they just you know they they set up the rift. They don't do anything with it, and we're gonna find out more about it in this one through the flashback probably. Like oh, this is what happened. This is why it happened. Here's how we. Well, I don't. They're not gonna fix it, but they're gonna try to make peace between the two. Yeah. So that was basically what was showcased. Off. That was literally like one of the last main important things that happened within the the cutscene that we got so far. And then you always get that last iconic scene of uh, the main characters looking over the horizon iconic. on the grass scene with the clouds up in the sky and usually with some big old mascots up on there. And when I saw the Xenoblade Chronicles and I saw the three came up in there, I was like, thank goodness that wasn't no X2. Because I was like, oh, freaking shoot. <laughs> I was and I was say, like, the Ooh. iconic 
three glow. And I was like, yeah, you got the three and the big red and everything like that. And then that was the last little bit that we got from the trailer, though. So we went through and nitpicked, I think for the most part, as much as what we could from the trailer. Um, if you happen to notice anything else from the trailer, let us know down in the comment section down below because uh, we love to hear your thoughts down on that, though. But um, I think that's about it in terms of the analysis of the actual trailer itself. So uh, any last thoughts that you might have thought about while we were talking about this uh this game trailer for Xenoblade Chronicles 3? Um, Mio is already shaping up to be one of the best girls. Same with Uni. I actually really like Tyon. Or what? Yeah, that's his name, right? The guy no. with the origami. I think um, <laughs> I, I kind of I kind of like how he looks. He just kind of looks like this guy that would be I'm, like the Omega Chad of the group. He looks I'm, like he'd be the comic relief like Zeke. So I'm, I'm, I'm loving the design for like the main protagonist, you know, Noah. You look no, sick. Noah, Noah looks pretty sick. I, I have to agree with you on yeah. that. I think, yeah, Tyon's, I like Tyon's design. That that scarf is a weird color that doesn't fit with the rest of it, but it probably has some sort of meaning. And yeah. also, uh, yeah, also the whole thing about, uh, what's her, what's the girl's name? The one with the hammer, Senna. Her, her, she's a blade. Yeah. She has so these lines. So yeah, that's that's something we didn't even discuss. What happens with blades now? We see we see hardly any blades. You know, we we don't even know if the blade cycle changed. Like you know, like we have no implication if the blade cycle changed after two. If blades once they died, they actually died instead of losing their memories. Instead of losing their memories wanted. and turning into another what, type. Well, that's what he... Essentially. Well, yeah, because, no, that's what he, they said they wanted. For, you know, Klaus is like, hey, well, yeah, like they say while they're in the room with Klaus, Bridget doesn't want to, like, forget more egg. You know, they don't... You know, I think the what Blades want... They're, like, I also think it's a good conclusion say that, that honors, like, Nia's, honors Nia's still things. alive. But Nia's well, still yeah, alive. But, that's just, well, yeah, but then but again, that could be due to the uh, fact that she's a flesh eater, yeah. so... Yeah, Who I'm knows? talking about normal, normal ass blades. You know, Jin's final wish was for them not to be slaves anymore, because that's what they were. If that's the case, then yeah, I can see that. But then the pyramid would still be alive, because when you, cause they're still Aegises, and they don't, you know. Yeah. I guess well, we, no, we, we probably have to look at, the... I guess, the second trailer. The second trailer, if we see Blaze or not, we'll really kind of determine well, whether or not they're kind of a well, thing or not anymore. And they'll probably like, hit on that topic maybe a little bit. It will be decrypted a little bit, but like mid to late game. I was going to say, to be honest, Pyra's power came from the conduit. Well, like the, the Aegis's power, all of their power came from the conduit. When Zanzo was destroyed, the conduit disappeared. The power of the Aegis is all faded. You know, Mithra. Well, Numa used the la the last of her power to bring Pyra and Mithra back. No, that wasn't what she used her was power. That? But no. Well, what? Well, what was it? What? Oh no, it was to uh, destroy the World Tree, right? Or whatever. Yeah. Then what? Then what happened? Why did they come back? Like the power. I could talk out about the... it, but that's gonna make the video a, a whole lot longer. Okay. A whole lot, a whole right. lot longer. Right. But well, yeah. I think we did good, I, I at least for this I one. I do think that, well, I think I think we're gonna get another returning character from Xenoblade Two that we didn't even talk about yet, and that's Zeke because yeah, yeah. he's a blade eater. You know, he's a. I think Zeke's gonna come back. Mikhail lived for five hundred years. And he was a blade eater, so like Zeke probably can still be alive, same as Pandoria, unless something happened. I don't. Know. But like hmm. Zeke and Pandoria can come back and be the comic duo that tests our main characters again, please. Please let that be what happens. I oh, don't know, man. I feel like you're reaching a little bit. Just a little bit. Not too much. No, he's, not, he's not wrong about the blade here. But the, he's not wrong about the blade here. Yeah. But, like, we don't... Yeah. I want them to come back. All right. Also, do we know how long Nopon lived for? I don't think so. I mean, like, Ricky was, like, like really old. He was like old as dirt, he... man. Uh, Ricky well, over I'm here. To find out... I, I'm trying to look up average age of nope, not Pop. Hmm. Um, because like they can grow up, they can grow to be 160 to one, 240 years old. Yo, they could be. That's old as dirt. Okay, so they could still be alive. Some of the nope can be alive. Daddy pun and Grappy pun. 
the no the no pawn sage has been alive for ten thousand years. If anybody if anybody's gonna be alive, and I'll go ahead yeah, and say like, it right now. How do you know? Like, how is that canon? You, we don't. No, that's I, like DLC. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But like, it can in canon they can live for at least two hundred years. So I'll go ahead um, and say this right now. If if any of them not pawn come back. Kill Ricky. Ricky doesn't need to be dead. He he. Why? I mean, he, he could be dead. I don't like that dude. That dude kind of suck. Bring back no, my boy Tora. No, Tora no, was no, comic relief. Really. Tora was good comedy bliss. Tora was way better than Ricky ever was uh, in Xenoblade Chronicles no. One. He did crap for me on that yeah. team. He didn't do squat for me. I put the dude out there. He died. I was like, bro, what are you supposed? You supposed to be a tank. I'm like, what the heck are you doing out here, man? I was like, no, nah, forget you. You you suck. At least Tor can get some stuff done and be funny at the same time. I don't know. I'm just going to end it off right there, though. But anyway, so I think that about does it for our Xenoblade Chronicles 3 discussion, though. Um, so uh, let let our fine viewers know where they, where they can find you at. Uh, uh, we'll let you go first, Steven. And, and don't keep it too long or I will cut uh, you off. Um, you can find me at, on Twitter at StevenJr1231. Bazinga. All I'm right. excited for Xenoblade 3. All right, bye. <laughs> All righty. It's nice having you there, Steven. Uh, what about you, Sonic Q? Where can they find you at? Uh, they can find me on Twitch, YouTube, Twitter. Uh, I, I, yeah, that's pretty much it. All righty. And I will leave both of their contact information down there in the description box down below. The both link to their Twitter, um, Twitches, YouTubes, all of that kind of stuff down there in the description box down below, though. But that's basically going to do it for the Xenoblade Chronicles 3 discussion. I know it was a big, and I know it was a long one, though. But thanks for bearing with us because we were kind of all over the place in terms of either analyzing the trailer, talking about the characters, talking about, the, you know, the game developers and their kind of vision for the game and all of this stuff. And then uh, talking about our theories and whatnot. It was, it was all over the place. But if you haven't played Xenoblade, Chronicles 1 Definitive Edition or Xenoblade Chronicles 2. I know y'all probably pulled a lot out of this and probably got your minds kind of jogging along um, just thinking about all the different possibilities that could happen uh, when in Xenoblade Chronicles 3. So I know this game to be very special. It does come out in September of this year. Don't have to wait too much longer for this game to release though. So oh man, I I'm just hugely excited about it for it though. But anyway, that's going to basically do it for this discussion for Xenoblade Chronicles 3. So if you really like this video, make sure to go ahead and hit that like button go ahead and hit that subscribe button and that bell to stay up to date on all things video game related i feel like talking about and discussing for the foreseeable future though so remember y'all until whatever video i make next see y'all whatever life is lost i won't let you soldier it all alone what good filling up these flickering clocks in our eyes it will never replace the friends we've lost the flame clock it has to go Uruboros abhor this world they must be erased without a trace